Hi, this is Raheem Jalfikar Ali from Excel Basement Private Limited. And uh, in this video, we will be learning that how to create sales analytics dashboard in Microsoft Power BI. And the level of uh, this training session will be basic to intermediate, whereas I will be sharing some uh, new tricks uh, and the features regarding Microsoft Excel and the Microsoft Power BI. So let's get started. We will be doing uh, the sales analytics uh, from this database. Um, I have opened this database in Microsoft Excel. And uh, first, let understand this database because the understanding of the database let you to decide that what kind of analytics or visuals you need to create in Microsoft Power BI. And uh, after understanding the database, definitely we we need to know that uh, either there is only a one fact table will be uh, in, a, in our dashboard or there will be some other dimension tables will be connected as a star schema or in future as a snow flag schema so in this example and in this video we will be having one table as a fact table and uh, in this table we have the order details for the year 2019 uh, more or less uh, in in the organizations uh, few people maintain only one database in the excel spreadsheet where where they have a lot of different columns pertaining to their business dimensions and that creates sometimes the data granularity later on because the number of rows becomes uh, very large and difficult to maintain in excel and creating a dashboards in microsoft excel always have a chances might be filed would be slow down or there will there will be speed optimization issues and and the visuals and and the uh, logics are not straightforward and easy as compared to microsoft power bi so in, in this video we will be doing the sales analytics based on our this one fact table database and we will be identifying that what kind of attributes are important to look at into the analytics of the sales for an organization and uh, through this uh, data what we can achieve more and also a, a little bit of aspect of data storytelling uh, with this uh, specific sales data okay so let me tell you the basic understanding of this database as you can see in, in excel we have in this data we have some columns uh, for example the first column is order id and definitely it's pertaining to the sales so every time the order comes in the order id generated by the system then we have the order date that each particular order has been created on a specific date so all the dates are of uh, 2019 uh, but in in might of the cases that we have more than one year as well and then we can go forward to compare year on year or within one year we can compare quarter to quarter or month to month with each other we can do that in power bi uh, then we have the customer IDs definitely the customers comes in and we have recorded their information uh, with some some relevant uh, fields like customer ID the name of the customer uh, the city which he or she belongs to the state okay state or the city and then the country so we have only one country USA and we have different states within this country so there are different salesperson uh, who are doing sales definitely they are the responsible to increase the revenue of for the organization and those salespersons are located into the different regions so we have four regions east north south west and uh, from this database you will be keep uh, remembering about your organization data which has the sales or the revenues um, information so so as you can compare with your organization data that that you have uh, where lot of salesperson in your organization and they are working not only with the four regions but multiple regions as well right then we have the shipping dates definitely the when the order received that we have to ship that particular order to to the particular shipper name and and the location and address so that the order should be reached to that customer so we have again some initial information like ship name ship address ships ship city uh, ship state right and country and region then we have the payment type because it's very important uh, the column of payment type a lot of customers um, uh, give their payment not through by cash uh, they they prefer credit cards 
So either they are paying through checks or through the credit cards. So in the sales analytics, we need to find out that um, how much volume has been generated by the credit cards or the cash uh, so that we can make a future strategies in, in terms of sales. Uh, then we have definitely if we are doing sales, we are doing sales for the products, right? And uh, those products are located in their main category. So each of the categories has multiple products in it. And then we have uh, the important area, which is the unit price of each of the product, uh, the, the quantity which has been sold to that customer and, and the revenue which we have generated. So it's a simple calculation. So the unit price is being multiplied with, with the quantity to generate the revenue. And last but not the least, we have the shipping fee as well, because uh, the customer need to pay the shipping fee in order to receive their uh, order of the product. So this is uh, a kind of a primarily data which each of the organizations has the, uh, these common fields or the columns in their databases. There might be few more columns which you can analyze as per your database. Uh, and through these columns, so we have 23 columns and through the this kind of an initial database, we can create very good dashboards primarily of intermediate level in, in the Microsoft Power BI. And uh, definitely it all about the ideas. First, you need to understand the database and then it comes to the uh, analyzing part and, and data model, modeling structuring part. One more thing, if you have observed that all the particular columns data of transformation has been already being corrected. So if if you find that any of the column data needs to be transformed later on, so you can use Power Query in Excel or you can use Power Query as well in Microsoft Power BI to transform your data in order to correct uh, the mistakes or, or to make it proper so that your analytics should give you a proper meaning to, to the visuals as well, right? So we have the Power Query available in Microsoft Power BI. So if in future, if you find you need to format or you need to transform any of the column, you can do that. But here in this example, we have uh, all the all the columns data is, is in proper structure. Uh, we have cleaned the data already, so we have uh, no transformation or or any kind of uh, extraction from for the Power Query to use in this video. So we will be quickly importing this data into the Microsoft Power BI. And uh, here, as you know, as an Excel user that this particular data set is being converted into a table. So when I go to when I when I open Power BI for the very first time, definitely you will see a blank screen. This this canvas uh, you need to click on get data or you can click on Microsoft Excel and the navigator window will open. So here you you can see two options. The first one is is the orders and the second one is the data. So you need to select the table here. Not the data because the data is pertaining to the entire uh, worksheet of that particular workbook. So we need to fetch the data from the table, which is called orders. And here you can preview the data accordingly that this is the data which you will be using in, in, in creating the sales analytics dashboard, right? So you can click on load and the data will be imported into the Microsoft Power BI application or you can click on transform data to make sure that you transform and correct the columns according to your requirements. Uh, and if you load first, the data later on, you can also transform the data within this application. So no worries about that. So we will click on load and the data will be loaded into the Microsoft Power BI. And uh, we need to analyze that what kind of analytics on primarily basis we can create um, and we can place the visuals in our dashboards to see the inside story of this particular sales uh, business. So the data is being loaded. All the rows will be imported from the sales analytics workbook into this Microsoft Power BI. So 369 rows has been loaded. And on the right side, you can see there is a field list. Um, uh, and you have observed this kind of field list might be if you have created previously pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. So you can see a field list kind of a thing in, in uh, Excel and Power BI is almost the same. We need to drag and drop each of the field into this canvas and we have to select the right proper visualization from it to uh, create a basic understanding of the data. Uh, the first thing is that you need some ideas. 
right? Uh, you need some ideas that what kind of information you need to put on onto your dashboard. That's very important. And a lot of users do mistakes when when they have no basic concepts of of uh, data visualizations. So it it should it could be learned with the passage of time with with the experience. And if we are using uh, Excel subscription version of S365, either it's a fast insider or slow, uh, you might be observing in your Microsoft Excel application that there, there is one feature which is called the ideas on the home tab. So if you don't have primarily any idea that how I can start with the analytics with this kind of a sales data, so you can get the ideas within the Microsoft Excel as well. So let's say when I click on the ideas button, so depending upon my internet speed and the connection, the ideas feature will analyze the data into four different uh, dimensions, uh, comparing outliers, variants, okay? And it will pop up some of the visualizations on the right side of this panel. And now you can see that. The first thing is that you can also use, uh, you can also ask question from this uh, ideas feature based on NLP, okay? Or you can also see the visuals that uh, this ideas has given you some of the basic features, uh, basic ideas uh, with respect to different kind of a charts. Okay, so it's giving and it also has written some of the key points uh, according to the analysis, according to the attribute. So, for example, uh, it has captured some of the outliers. So, for payment type, credit card quantity has seven outliers. So we can analyze our data in this way also. And uh, for payment type credit card shipper name, shipping company C has noticeably higher unit price. So now these are some of the ideas, initial ideas of the analytics from which we can uh, do some, some uh, analysis for our sales da databases, right? Now, how we can start within the Power BI? That's the question. Now that's that's the feature available in, in Microsoft Excel, but uh, definitely in Microsoft Power BI when it comes to the business intelligence application. And throughout in this specific video, I will be telling you some of the intermediate uh, level of dashboards that every user can do it, which you will be seeing in this video. If you have the data, a uh, sales data or might be in your case if you are working on a different kind of a database for example if you are working on a healthcare database if you're working on a hr database uh, definitely you have a transaction wise data and you have multiple columns pertaining to your business uh, attributes and dimensions so you can create visuals in in your uh, in your dashboards but it's also a matter that what kind of ideas should be correctly bring your data story uh, in order to make a decision making to expand the business further or to make some strategies out of that dashboard, right? So with particular to the sales dashboard, let's start creating a sales analytics dashboard. So first we uh, first I would like to start with uh, giving a title to it. So uh, giving a title is, is very easy. All right, so let's insert a title. For inserting a title, you need to go to insert tab and click on the text box. And uh, here you can start typing uh, whatever title you are need to give. So we will give sales analytics dashboard. And uh, from this formatting bar, you can uh, increase the size of the font. You can make it align center, make it a bit bold and uh, you can change the font as you like okay so for example we'll be having the calibri here and you can resize by dragging and dropping its borders and you have placed it nicely to it right here okay so first we have given this sales analytics dashboard title so now uh, one more thing which i want to tell you is that there is a difference between analytics and the business intelligence and the business intelligence is the advanced part of the analytics first you need to be a very proficient either you are the business analyst in your organization or you are the sales analyst or finance analyst so first uh, if you are a good smart anal analyst person so you do analytics in the dashboard 
and moving forward you need to learn the business intelligence now business intelligence is entirely a different field of study and it's a vast field of study and in future in my webinars and in my videos i will be telling you that how business intelligence being applied to the dashboards but in this particular video i will be mainly focusing on the analytics part okay because a lot of users get confused and mix these both the concepts of analytics and business intelligence all together but you need to learn that the analytics the advanced analytics and the business intelligence is a separate portion although they are all connected with each other in order to make the advanced level dashboards for the organizations but initially it starts with the analytics okay so the, so we have given a title here now uh, you can also add a logo of your organization as well by clicking on this image icon and you can import that image of your organizations okay now the next part is that we need to think of it that how would we starting um, and uh, what kind of attributes or dimensions will go in the slicers part uh, which dimensions will be in the visuals as a column chart or a line chart so let's get start uh, first we need to again see the data and we need to analyze that which kind of things will go into the slices uh, if we need to require to uh, fetch the data from that and there is a concept of uh, raw contacts and filter contacts as well which which uh, brings more intuitive and interactive view of the dashboards in microsoft power bi and each of the of each of objects are connected with each other uh, when you click on that all the objects will get changed and if you want to uh, stop any of the object with the other object you can add it interaction feature you can stop that feature with other interactivity as well we can also see that in later on this video but first we need to analyze that what kind of feature will go in the proper and right visuals according to this uh, visuals part in in our dashboard right so now first thing is uh, which i starting with one one of the visual that when when the orders has been uh, received by the organization by the company uh, and and when the uh, user or or the customer is basically paying so he or she is paying by three different methods either he is paying through cash through check or through credit card and we need to identify that which is is being mostly used by the customer either they are preferring credit card or cash or the check so we can uh, do some uh, visuals for for this kind of particular attribute and uh, we will be using let's say uh, a donut chart for that so i will simply click on donut chart and one visual one blank visual will appear in my this canvas and i i can just decided resize it to make it a larger or to make it a smaller as per my uh, condition uh, which i need to best fit into this uh, my canvas dashboard so now i need to uh, place the payment type into uh, here so let's say i will just drag and drop the payment type here into my this donut chart and uh, then i need to drag and drop the revenue as well so now the visual has been created and as you can see this is the basic visual and if you need to uh, do some formatting like you need to have the title at the center legend at the bottom or on the left side you can do all these kind of customization even you can change the font size and the colors in in this visual as well so let first do the formatting part so that you can know that how the formatting has been done in power bi so we have the visual ready and which tells us that um, customers uh, from this visual we can do some analytics that the customers mostly prefer payment by the credit cards and very less by the cash so in 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 the country we are presented in in the states we are doing that this business uh, is a ca mostly cashless society and they are mostly preferring credit cards right so um, let's do the formatting part and uh, for example if we need to uh, do some formatting of the legend i i have just click on this format button right and then we have all the categories for this visual available and we can expand the each of the category we are required to make some certain changes 
so for example i need to see the legend at bottom center and you can quickly see that we have the legend at the bottom center uh, i don't need to have give it a name so that the space should be uh, utilized for other things uh, the title should be in, at the top of the center so what i can do is i will expand the title part and i will just say that make it to the center right so so these formatting areas are very simple and easy you can just expand the categories and you can explore the formatting options available in microsoft power bi uh, one more thing that i need to tell you that which fee, uh, which version i am using power bi and as you are watching in this video so i will go to the help uh, help ribbon and i will click on about so as you can see that i am using april 2020 version so later on if you will be doing practice at your end in microsoft power bi make sure that you are using the latest version of power bi in order to have all these features available in your uh, for for your dashboard okay so if you will be using a previous version might be you will not find that feature later on okay next part is that uh, we need to uh, let's say increase the size of uh, the data labels for example if if i do if i need to make sure it should be in thousands the color should be in black right and uh, i need to increase the text size of this these labels so as you can see so that it should be visible and then i need to change the colors of this visual now it's very important that when you will be making dashboard for your organization you will be following some theme colors right and now there are a lot of uh, third party tools available uh, which gives you to set the theme colors within the microsoft power bi or you can do some uh, you can import the theme if you have created through the J J json javascript you can also do customization within your themes as well so the videos are available on youtube you can check later on but at, at this initial moment i will tell you that how you can change the colors later on you can set a theme for for your dashboard and you can if you are making multiple dashboards so you can use that theme colors in, in your Microsoft Power BI. Okay, so to change the colors of this visuals, uh, what we can do is, uh, I have expanded the data colors. And uh, here, I, as you can see, there are three categories, credit card, check, and cash. So I can customize the colors. So in, in this dash sales analytics dashboard, I will be using these yellow colors. Uh, in every of the visuals with different gradients and, and darker and lighter shades. Right. So now. So we have the uh, revenue by payment type. OK, and uh, we can set this visual anywhere. Now, and it's very important. Now you need to also learn that when you have created this visual uh, where you need to put that on your dashboard and it's very important you need to learn the data storytelling ideas that uh, the user usually starts seeing from left to right and the top to bottom so whatever visuals you will put on the top will be the first most attention part of that for that user so you need to make sure that if the visual is very important and you need to make sure that the user should see that first you need to make it on top if that information is relevant to the later part you can put it on the middle of this canvas or the on the end or, or the corner side as well so 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 putting the visual at the right side is also a strategy for the dashboard makers and that's very important as well okay so we will be aligning the all the uh, different objects at the end of this dashboard that which kind of visual will go top and and the bottom and right to left to right okay later on so first we need to create the visual so first visual we have created is a donor chart where we have revenue by payment types and we can analyze that how much percentage and the amount has been uh, make contribution in the revenue pertains to the credit card check or the cash now the next part is uh, let's pick one more visual and it says that uh, sales person wise revenue because we have some salesperson who are generating the revenue and we want to see that which salesperson has created the highest revenue and which has the lowest so i will just quickly uh, create a bar chart for now for creating a bar chart i will just click on uh, this simple 
uh, bar chart let's say clustered bar chart all right and then i will just drag and drop the fields okay you will drag the sales person here and the revenue amount revenue field so here you have total of uh, eight salesperson which uh, consist of uh, their revenues contribution for the organization now you can also do some formatting and let me tell you some of the very good ideas regarding the formatting so let's click on this format tab and uh, first let's change the color so by default it's the blue color and if we need to have this yellow color we have set the yellow color because i told you that our theme will be uh, in in yellow colors uh, to change the page name as you can see at the bottom just you do in microsoft excel double click on this and you can write the name which you are required sales analytics right and then uh, in this visual we need to add uh, the data labels because we need to see the amount as well and uh, we need to have the center align on the title as well so for the data labels as you can see that the data label is being off currently we will click onto it again so that it should be on and we can also set the colors and the display units if you need to have data data labels in millions and billions because um, in, in the larger organization their sales amounts are millions and billions so uh, you can't do a none because it will show you the full amounts and it it will not give you a good meaningful way to read the numbers so you need to make sure that it's formats with with the right formatting idea and, and should be a standard format so here we can use the thousands format in your case if the amounts are very large you can use millions or the billions accordingly you can set the colors of that uh, display units uh, for the data labels and also for the y-axis uh, we will have the color instead of gray black okay you can increase the font size as well so that the name should be visible right and uh, as we know that these are the salesperson so we don't need this name separately as a salesperson on the y-axis so let's see if we can turn off this as well so yes we can turn off the salesperson as well right and uh, we need the title at the center so what we can do is we can have the title alignment at the center and if you need a, to make it a large size you can do as uh, this as well and we can also make this as large size for our previous visual 216 right so we have now two visuals and uh, uh, coming to the next part So for 2019, we will again have a bar chart that will be good one for the visual. So top five customers. So we have the field which is called customer name. We will drag this and drop this here and we will have the revenue field in, into that, this, right? Now you can see that we have a, a lot of customers who are purchasing, who are giving the orders. But from this particular visual, we need to have only top five. Now there are a lot of techniques uh, later on parts in the advanced dashboards you will learn that how you can control this with the help of DAX but in this uh, particular video I will be telling you that how we can do without the DAX by using the filters pane and within the filters pane we can easily make it to the top five or you can make it to the top ten as per your requirement so as you can see that I have a filters pane right here and we have a field which is called revenue I will just expand this field and uh, and also we have a field which is called customers right so we need a uh, top five customers right so when I expand this customer name field you can see that in the filter type you have selected by default it's basic filtering so here we can select top n and how many uh, top uh, top customers you need to have this in this visual so i will write five here you can place any number according to your requirement but here we need top five and also based on which field so by in the buy value 
we will place the revenue here drag and drop the revenue here and last we will click on apply filter so now here you can see that we have top five uh, sorted largest to smallest top five customers by revenue so this is how this is the one of the easiest way to uh, get the top five or the bottom five as well according to your requirement right and now we can do some formatting uh, kind of a things here we can we need to set the top five customers as in yellow color then we need to add the data labels so that we can recognize that uh, how much has the contribution from each of the customer and we can give future discounts occur for on this basis right then we can resize the amounts we can uh, we can expand the y-axis and we can increase the text size as well we don't need uh, this uh, customer name uh, title on the y-axis so we will turn off this uh, we need the title to be in the center portion so we can uh, make it align center now one thing which you have observed that i am doing it again all the same steps which i have done in the previous visual one thing you can do is to save your time is that uh, you can click on the previous visual and you will go to home tab and click on format painter when you click on format painter come to the new visual you have created and just click on that so all the formattings all the standard formattings will be copy and pasted as a format painter uh, might be you have an idea in microsoft excel uh, of this tool so you don't need to do it again and again you can copy the format and paste onto the new visual to save the time in order to doing it again right but uh, here i am doing it for you because you need to understand that how this formatting area can be utilized and uh, need to explore some of the features in front of you right so now we have uh, three visuals on our database and you can see that if when i just uh, making it resizing it, it the visual is also uh, making adjustment according to the visual size uh, and gives me numbers very good and uh, meaning meaningful now we have three visuals now furthermore what we can do from our test sales dashboard and which kind of analytics further we can create so let's move to the next visual uh, we will create uh, sales by region because we need to also look at this matter that which region is going very good in terms of generating the revenue for the organization so at, at this point of time now we will create a different visual we will create a clustered column chart and uh, we will drag and drop the region here and then the revenue field here right and we can quickly see that we have the north east south and west north has the highest contribution in terms of the revenue uh, and we will let's see if, if the format painter works here or not so if i click on this previous visual i will click on format painter and i will just click on the new visual so now you can see that uh, i don't need to make it uh, resize in the title at the center by going manually here in the formatting areas i just copied and pasted the formatting visual format by the format painters right so this is how you can do it by saving your time here and uh, this is the visual which we have revenue by region okay so now the next visual which we need to create furthermore what we can do is, is uh, we need because we have the order dates now it's very important we need to see that sales trend as well so when when whenever there is a time period involved in in your database we create and we mostly prefer the line charts for that and here we can easily see the sales trend by the order date so now in in the next visual we will create a line chart and uh, i will drag and drop the order dates here and as you can see there is a default hierarchy has been created uh, date hierarchy has been created into four different uh, dimensions that is year quarter month and day okay so this is one of the feature uh, within the microsoft power bi so it recognizes order dates are dates and it creates the date hierarchy and within this hierarchy we need to have uh, we need to ha only have a, com a trend of the month wise revenue so we will just have the month check here and we will drag the revenue field into this portion so we have from january to december a sales trend and from this trend we can analyze that uh, where our sales has been dropped 
and we can further do some uh, some analysis right that what was the reason of sales drop and, and if the sales has been high what was the reason of that particular sales being where revenue has been generated highly because might be it's it's a uh, it's a time of uh, of a certain occasion or or some different campaigns running on by the organization so there might be a different uh, reasons to that so let's do some formatting for this line chart as well and let me explore uh, the available formatting features here so we have a data colors we will uh, put the data color as uh, based on a theme which is the yellow color so this is the line which has the yellow color data label should be on and uh, data labels should be in black instead of gray and uh, it's a bit more size that is 10 then we can do some settings for the x-axis and the y-axis that these are the categorical and the color should be the black right and what we can do further is we need to hide the title for the y-axis so that the space should be utilized for other parts so i will just off the title as well because if we know that it's a revenue uh, the title should be in the center so what we can do is we can uh, go to the title part expand this field and uh, we will say that alignment will be 14 and the size will be 16 right so here we can see the trend of sales trend by the month wise and uh, one more thing that uh, if you can see here uh, there is an increase in the month of june right so now when there is an increase and we we are very interested to find the reasons for that increase so what i can do is i, I will just right click on this and there is one contextual menu uh, appears and we have an option that is called analyze and within that analyze a sub menu says explain the increase now when we click on explain the increase the artificial intelligence within this power bi uh, will analyze the data and generating the results and on the top as you can see that it gives us the reason very quickly there here is the analysis of the 62.07 percent increase in revenue between may and june so 62 percent revenue has been generated and what were those reasons uh, so it gives you a quickly a very good waterfall chart that between may and june what were the reasons that this increase has been very high okay and it gives you a reasons of different aspects for example the first reason is based on month and customer name the second reason is based on month and the state the third reason is based on month and the salesperson so these were the salesperson who has uh, made a, a, a contribution for the company and they done a very hard work in order to generate a revenue or there there might can be a different reason as well so there are different aspects to this data story that the increase in the june the, the revenue which increase in the june has a different data storytelling with the different dimensions and the attributes and i hope you are now understanding that these things are called the analytics within the power bi with different aspects in the dimension and you can add this uh, if you want any kind of a visual into your power bi you can simply click on this plus button and that visual will be added uh, in the in this canvas so this is one of the very good feature for quick analytics within the power bi as well right so this is very cool similarly if you need to have analysis and you need to find out the east distribution i will just right click and then you can see super cool uh, very quickly the power bi is creating the reasoning along with reasoning they are creating the visuals for us to analyze the data further this is the advanced analytics now might be you have an idea of the histogram charts and um, within the histograms we have some bins likewise from 0 to 1000 then 1000 to 2000 and you need to analyze the revenue bins so that each of the bin has generated how many kind of a transaction which the particular invoices by the customer so how we can do that uh, let's try it out so for creating a bins i will just right click on the revenue and uh, revenue field and here you can see there is a contextual menu right and i will just click on new group and when i click on new group 
the groups uh, window dialog window is now appear and uh, here we need to create the bins so first we need to give a field name uh, revenue bins and the group type will be bin we don't need to create a list we need to create a bin and the size of the bin now you, you can see that in our particular data the minimum value starts from the zero and the maximum is 7938 and the by default the bin size is 529 so it it gives us an idea that each of the bin size will be an incremental of 5529 and if there are 7938 uh, number as a maximum value so there will be might be more than 10 bins will be created in, in our uh, visual so we don't need uh, too many bins equally sized groups uh, need to be have in our visual we need some less bins so either you can uh, set the bin size as whatever you like or you can select in the bin type you can select the number of bins you are required for your visual so i will click on number of bins and as you can see that if this number goes with the 529 bins there will be 15 bins but our requirement is not with the 15 bins we need to create for example uh, seven bins so automatically the bin size will be revised and you can see that 11 uh, 1134 equivalent sizes seven bins will be created so i will just press ok And now we have uh, a new field which is called revenue bins and uh, what we can do is we can have first um, a good visual for that so we will use clustered call up chart and here we will put the revenue bins in this visual by dragging and dropping and also the revenue field as well so now as you can see that there are seven bins into in our this visual right so this is how we can create a kind of a bins um, in order to achieve uh, or to analyze the revenues in a different way. And we can do some of the formatting as well. For example, I will just click on the previous visual, click on format painter and I will apply this visual. So there are some bins, each of the bin has some of the revenue, how much revenue has been generated in each of the bins area. So, so we can analyze in a different way, right? And uh, let me added groups if i go for the less bins for example if i go with the five bins i press ok so now you can see that uh, we can understand that uh, each of the bins uh, how much has the revenue in each of the bin has been created so this is another way of doing the analytics as well right so uh, now it's a, it, it's a time to uh, customize our dashboard according to to the left to right and top to bottom a strategy so now we have enough of the uh, visuals in our dashboard so we need to identify that which visual should remain on top and left and right side so table into the slicer so we will just click on slicer and we have a slicer either you can uh, see a slicer as a list or you can simply click on this uh, small uh, arrow top right and you can select drop down here so that this we can have a good uh, area safe for for the other visual as well so we have a category and within the category if we select any of the category here you can see that all the visuals have changed accordingly and th they have filtered itself from the data so this is a very cool uh, feature of microsoft power bi that for each of the particular category we can analyze in, into the different aspects and it gives a very quick reporting for for our analysis as well and within this let's suppose if later on i need to select all the uh, categories again so we don't have select all button here so we can add that as well what we can do is i will go to format tab and uh, here i will expand the selection controls and from this area you can see you can click on select all right and when i click on select all my dashboard will be on a different and in a default position as well right uh, there, there are a lot of features available in power bi likewise you can uh, create a custom tooltip as well now as you can see that when i hover my cursor on on any of the visual a black tooltip appears and it gives me a certain numbers according to that filter so if i need to customize this entire tooltip i can do this as well and i will tell you that how we can do in in this by giving you an idea also we need we can create a drill through feature 
which which I have already covered in most of our my Power BI videos on my YouTube channel Excel Basement. So you can watch it later on that how you can do the uh, drill through part as well, right? So we have a slicer as well at top here. Uh, also, we can uh, more more slices if we need more slices. For example, uh, if we need to analyze with this state, right? Particular state uh, or the ships ship city. So we can uh, add the ship city slicer as well and we will be doing the same thing which we have done for, for this ship city converted into a drop down slicer and uh, yes here is it so if i select any of the city you can see that the whole dashboard has been uh, applied on that particular city so we can add the select all button by going to that same feature selection controls click on all on and click on select all right so we have two slicers now uh, because in this video we uh, i am just to, i have just told you two slicers you can add many slicers as you want according to your requirement to filter the other attributes of the dashboards just to give you an idea i have just uh, utilized the two uh, slicers for my dashboard here okay so let me put it right here and if you want to make sure you want to give a border to it or some colors as well you can go for that uh, for example let me show you if you need to give a border you will have to on the border option and uh, here you need to select the color which is let's suppose the black color and uh, if you need to give it a background color to it you can uh, go for a background color which speaks all this stuff but I think that white color would be a preferably, preferably uh, a better choice because we need to make it as simple as possible. So again, to the second visual, we will give the border or we can do it by the format painter as well. No worries. So this is how you have uh, given to you have a two slices around your uh, sales analytics dashboard. And uh, here we can have uh, let's say if we can go for one more analytics or one more how many products are there how many categories are there sometimes we need to have that how many products are currently in in our in our sales database and how many categories are there so you need a count so let me tell you uh, this thing as well so let's say if if i go with the for example product name and category right so product name i will just drag and drop the product name and i will make make it as a card so and within the cards when you make it card for the first time the first field which is elements is is now being appeared here so in the fields area you can see that uh, the calculation is selected as first you need a count here when i click on count it says 369 now as i know that there are no 369 products in our organization for for sales there are less products but because they are counting the duplicates as well we need a distinct count here so i will instead of count i will select the distinct count and you can also do distinct count by with the help of dax also so there are 24 products uh, in, for in our organization we are doing sales for that and we can now customize this uh, visual as well uh, in terms of formatting so let's suppose uh, for the data label we will select the theme color so that it should be match or the light color okay so the product there are 24 products and uh, uh, the title would be products and it will be on the center 16 will be the size there will be a border to it which will be a black we don't need a title which is coming at the end so the category will be off so this is a neat and nice clean visual in in our uh, this dashboard and we can do right we can make us a bit smaller so now as you can see that we have 24 products and if i need to find out how many categories are there or something which which i require a count for that so i just 
go to the previous visual control c control v copy and paste and then i can just revise instead of product name i need a uh, let's suppose what i have uh, category right so category will be here and again i will select the distinct count here and uh, in the title i will have i will write the category right so these kind of statistics which you uh, which you are required to do to do the further analytics so let me just again make sure i have proper aligned these objects and uh, yes you can observe one thing that when i uh, just drag and drop my uh, visuals to to the bit better area the red lines are automatically being drawn the, these red lines are uh, giving me a direction that my visual is correctly aligned horizontally and vertically or not so th this gives you an, another way that your visual is being correctly aligned or not okay so let's see if i will put this visual a bit close right and one more uh, let's say number we could add for for any of the particular item which we are required uh, how many states are there for example ship states count we we are required okay so let's say instead of category i will just at the ship state here and uh, instead of first i will have the distinct count so we have 12 ship states and for the title ship states and i will just drag and drop this visual right here see so this is how you are uh, giving the top information that first the user can might be filtered according to the requirement they can see the important numbers of the business or you can say the kpis in your case if you go for the advanced analytics and then they can uh, choose to uh, view the visual as well so now let me just drag and drop each of the visual to their correct area so first we need to give a view to the to the management about the trend of the sales uh, trend about the about our revenue side and then we need to have uh, a visual which will be sales by region yeah the most particular and good visual would be after the time period would be the region as well and it's also a, depends on your requirement as well don't worry about that okay and uh, for that yeah, if i can just drag it up right so i can just drag and drop this visual to larger part okay and here in in the in more advanced analytics what you can do is you can have uh, a kind of a chart which is called the uh, line and stack column and month wise if you have the actuals and the budgets and you can calculate month on month variance as well which is almost an advanced part and i will do in in my advanced level trainings in the power bi so there is one more idea for the analytics is that if you have if, if you are if your database have the budget as well or the forecasting of the sales so you can have the actuals versus budget and one chart and the variance as well so you can go for that visual as well so this is one of the idea which i have given you right so now we have first revenue by month then revenue by region then we have uh, now we have four different visuals so this visual will go like this now i am just making it resize so that i can follow the rule of uh, the contrast alignment uh, proximity right and then one more visual which is revenue by customer name so now you can see that our visuals are almost ready and they are looking very good so with with now this is 
telling you a, a different kind of a story based on uh, like previously you ha just have the black and white data which does not giving you a meaningful uh, way to analyze and do some decision making now this kind of a data should need to be visual on a dashboard like the application power bi as well and in this particular video i have told you some of the basic to intermediate level of creating a dashboard so that every user can at least start by creating these kind of visuals and stories and create dashboard for their management and share accordingly so this is this is not very difficult this is easy right and we can do a lot of things like formatting and we can create a borders for that uh, borders to it for our, all our visuals So now as you can see that if the space is less, so in our visual, the percentage are not showing uh, particularly after the decimal point. So what we can do is now, now here you can uh, need to have some different ideas that uh, if the detailed labels as in uh, data values or the percentage, or if you just need a percentage of total, or you need a category or date, data values, or then you can set the different customization for example you don't need decimals so you can write zero here and press enter so now the percentage are visible you don't need decimal places after the values so now you can see that when i make a zero value decimal places and percentage decimal places to the zero now uh, my visual is still of the same size but the numbers are also uh, being properly shown right so this is how you need some formatting tips and tricks uh, for your ideas to in, to inculcate in the dashboard as well right so this is how you can uh, you have created a sales analytics dashboard at the intermediate level now let's come to some more uh, tips and tricks uh, as i told you some uh, some go very good features uh, for that dashboard that you can do some analytics analyze and uh, power bi has the capability to make sure that it drill down to the further uh, reasoning of this particular number but for example if you need to customize the tooltip as you can see there is a black tooltip visible on every of my visual and you can uh, create uh, a different uh, tooltip for every of individual visual in your dashboard as well okay so i i can t i will tell you uh, only one tooltip for for the one particular uh, visual you can do later on at your end for, for multiple tooltips now let's see let's say okay, if if we have uh, if we need a further uh, reasoning or analytics region on on particular region wise when i come to my visual which is the region wise north it, it shows me a revenue of 141 right but i need to look it into this number in a different aspect and i want that this particular north region has uh, uh, how many product wise sales what are those products which has been generated this 141660 revenue okay so what i can do is i can customize the, this tool tip as well so i will i need to go to this uh, plus sign which will add one more page to my power bi uh, dashboard and i will rename is it as tool tip you can rename it as the name as you like I am just giving a name which is tooltip for my basic understanding. So now there are three to four steps to create a customized tooltip. As first, you need to go to this format button, click on format button, expand this page information, and uh, here the tooltip feature is being off. Just click on on. Okay, this tooltip will get on. Now the next part is that the page size. The page size should be of tooltip because we don't need to create a dashboard again we just need to utilize this particular page as a tooltip okay so i will click on tooltip the third step would be that on the view tab i will go to the page view and i will click on actual size so that i can be aware that my tooltip will be of this size uh, later on you can do a custom size for your tooltip as well by clicking on custom and you can uh, 
increase or decrease the height and the width of this customized tooltip as well but i at this point of our time i i just need this height and width tooltip to be applied on my this sales analytics re revenue by region visual okay so what i can do is um, i will now what what was my aim was basically to see the each of the region by its product wise revenue that would be split into a uh, product wise revenue so uh, what i can do is i will just place the revenue field here and i will convert this into a card and i will tell this visual that give me uh, give me a display unit as none give me a full amount and uh, zero decimal value places plus i don't need uh, this let's suppose uh, this category should be off title should be off i will resize this okay and uh, after resizing it i will place in, into a proper uh, area and i can decrease the size as well so let's say a data label should not be 45 it should be let's say 40 somewhere around 40 okay so i can resize it a bit and uh, let's do it right okay now i need uh, need a let's suppose a categories or the product wise so we will go with the categories um, that's the category and uh, here we need to drag one more field which is called revenue and by default it's a table visual so instead of table we will click on this and we will tell them to create as a column chart for us and uh, we will do some formatting for that also so we need a data labels as well and it shows in millions right so we need to have a proper standard format for that so we need to have in thousands amounts and uh, what we need is we need to change the color we need to uh, make it to a center so for the data colors we will have this uh, particular light color visual and then what we need is uh, revenue by category is should be in in the center so the title would be align as a center now let's say if i want to make it a black color background color you can change the background color as well you will go to page background and you will select the color and make sure that you decrease the transparency percentage now uh, also as you have observed that we have two objects one is the number of the total revenue and, and the revenue by category so we need to turn off the background as well for these visuals so we will click on background as off and then we will click on this particular background is off now as we off this visual background and we have no fill color into it but the main background is black so that why that's why the other titles and the numbers are also in the black color so it's not visible so we need to make sure that it should be in a light color either should be it a, a light yellow or, or or a white color should be so what we can do is we can uh, make sure that the data label instead of black should be a white right and also the this column chart uh, data label should be in white colors and as well as the x axis and the y axis label should also be in the white so it's very easy in the formatting tab you can just play around with the colors as well class <laughs> Now for the sales analytics, uh, what we can do is now now we are ready with the tooltip. Now we need to apply the tooltip on this particular visual, which is called revenue by region, right? So instead of this by default tooltip, we need to have our customized tooltip, which is available on the other page. So I will click on this particular visual and I will go to format tab. And here I will select expand the tooltip, right? And in the page field, I will select the tooltip, which is the name uh, I, I have given this page tooltip. Okay. In your case, it might be a different name as well. Now, when I return to my this particular visual again, so now as you can see that this particular visual is being auto filtering and filtering itself according to the number which is available in revenue by region graph. And I can see that what are those products highest to lowest has been uh, made 141660 sales in the North region. And particularly for the West region, what are those products who has made uh, those sales, right? So this is how you can customize 
uh, these tool tips and these are filtering the data according to the visual or the volume itself now this is a very fantastic feature by customizing uh, your tool tip right so that's was uh, that was the uh, sales analytics dashboard which i wanted to show you uh, in this particular video that you can start with the power bi there is there should be no fear factor and with the passage of time and with the experience and the mistakes you will do you will learn that how to make some proper uh, visuals giving a meaning to it uh, doing some storytelling with your data and sharing the dashboard with your senior management in order to uh, make decision making that what your business is particularly doing so from this kind of a simple black and white data we have in very short period of time we have created an intermediate level of dashboard in power bi which is related to the sales analytics dashboard we can do a lot of things there are a lot of features uh, available in power bi uh, also you can go for the custom visual as well for example when you click on more visuals and when you will go to the app source there are more than 250 plus visuals available in the in the app source now and for that you need uh, to access these kind of uh, visuals uh, you need to have uh, sign up from your official account from your uh, workplace account hotmail gmail will not work even some of the experts has told their on your on their youtube channels that you can do some uh, tricks with your gmail account in order to get the power bi account but i would recommend that use your official uh, workplace account in order to get this app apps apps store uh, access and you can uh, all the visuals are available you just need to add they are free of cost uh, uh, you don't need to pay anything and according to your uh, analytics idea you can add this visuals in your visualization pane and you can start it to create some awesome dashboard so i hope you like this sales analytics dashboard uh, the, the database will be in the description link of this video on our youtube channel excel basement you can download the data and you can practice and make sure that either you can create a same kind of a dashboard which i have created or you can do something different and meaningful more uh, to this dashboard uh, and uh, generate your own kind of perception in, in terms of analytics right so thank you so much for watching this video take care bye bye